Hi people. Good morning. Wow, you guys are looking so radiant this morning. Thank you very much. I'm sure you're ready for today. Yes, sir. I need to press up on my knuckles today. Today, that's good. So you had a great time at your spot time? Yeah, we did. Good, good, good. All right, um, very quickly, very quickly. Um, we don't have time today. We have a lot of work to do. Very hectic, I tell you. So it means you have to prepare yourself very well for today, mentally, physically, all right? Because um, let me just give you this. So many of you will be on the hot seat today, all right? So get ready, okay? Yeah. And don't forget, I know that the tension is so full in the house right now. Because so many of us, we are under, we have been conce considered for eviction, right? Yeah. Six of us, yeah. apart from one. Seven, so, okay. Yeah, apart from one. All the guys apart from one. Apart from one, yeah. right? Aha, yeah. uh -huh, so correct. All right, so let's see how you make it work. But don't worry, don't forget that you still have a lot of time. Yeah. All right, to cover up for that. Okay. So don't get bamboozled, all right? Yeah. Don't get mesmerized. Yeah. So just take your time. Work on the mistakes you've made, all right, so that you can keep yourself here. And let's hope that those that are watching will keep you in the house, all right? Yeah. All right, then, so guys, let's get ready so that we go have our breakfast, we eat well, so that we can face the tasks ahead. Is that fine? Yeah. All right, in five minutes, let's be downstairs for our breakfast. Yeah, right. All right, thank you. Yeah. Cheers, guys. Yeah. Yeah, what? Oh, please do. Please come, come, come. come. Hi. Good morning. Good morning. Wow, you yeah, are yeah. up and steady already. Yes. Did you sleep well? Can I sit? Yes, please. Did you sleep well? Yes, we did. Hmm. Um, How was the drilling process? Fine, I did sleep well. Okay. How was the morning drill this morning? Mm. Mm. Interesting. V, you're still, you're still recuperating from the, <laughs> <laughs> from the morning process, I see. Exactly. Did you like stretch, stretch, stretch? Yeah, we did. Yes, we did. Did you arrive on time? Yes. Perfect. <laughs> Perfect. Because, because yes, yes. Ah, yes. That, that is it. I understand that some of you are tense because um, one person is up for eviction. You possible eviction, right? Yes. Okay, I would just want you to understand that now is the time for you to appeal to the audience to, you know, keep you in the house, to vote for you. You understand? I want you guys to just put your best foot forward. Don't be tensed. Mm -hmm. Just, you know, Put your best foot forward. Be natural. Put, think straight. Don't get distracted. And then everything's going to be fine. At the end of the day, everyone's a winner, right? Yeah. <laughs> okay, so I will want you to get dressed because um, today is going to be a lot of, we are going to have a lot of tasks today, back mm. to back. So I want you to be prepared <laughs> mentally, physically, yeah, even if it means spiritually. <laughs> just, <laughs> just be prepared. Sunday, all right? You know what I said about being expect the unexpected. Mm -hmm. You need to read, you need to do a lot of um, covering up so that you don't mess up when you get there. Exactly. Okay, for now, we will want you to, you know, get dressed, come downstairs for breakfast so we get fortified mm. for today's stuff. <laughs>
Welcome to another live show on the Tetias Reality TV show. It's your host, Oyari. Now, of course, I'm not doing this alone. I have with me the most amazing, fine boy, no pimples, and talented Baba Show. <laughs> thank you so much, Oyari. And you're just beautiful. Oh, thank you. You're not looking <laughs> bad yourself. Thank you. All right, our viewers, we're going very quickly on a break. And when we come back, we're going to be having all 15 housemates here with us on the stage. Behind this Teachers TV reality show. Welcome back. Ladies and gentlemen, we have our esteemed housemates here on the stage. Yep. Aren't they looking good? You can say that again. So right about <laughs> now, we're just going to let the judges address the housemates and tell us the task for today. Today's task is called set induction. It is a non-verbal communication, a quality that is desired of a teacher to communicate with his or her pupils, and therefore you are expected only to use gestures, grimaces, actions, to express and explain concepts that you will be asked to choose from amongst a variety to your class. And so you will be assessed. Number one, comportment. Two, meaningfulness of your nonverbal communication. Three, your ability to convey meaning with the time frame. And finally, your general conduct. You have just one minute for this task. Good luck. Ladies and gentlemen, we have heard from our judges and we wish all our esteemed housemates best of luck. That's right. We're going to quick break. When we come back, the show is going to begin. TV reality show. You are contestant number one. You have questions listed 1 to 15. You are free to choose any, and whatever you choose is what you are going to communicate. Make your choice. Question four. Question four says religion. That is your topic for today. And your time starts now. You are candidate number two. You have topics listed 1 to 15. Make your choice and we'll read it out to you. You are to mime the action to your class as you were instructed. You have one minute to do so. Make your choice. Number four says religion. Your time starts now.
Thank you. You are candidate number three. You have from a list of topics to teach to any class of yours, one to 15. Make your choice and we'll read it to you and then you act as you were instructed. Number three. Number three says, family. You have one minute and your time starts now. candidate number four before us is a list of topics to be taught in any class of yours listed 1 to 15 you are free to choose any number and then act it as you were instructed number five says addition and subtraction you have one minute your time starts now Candidate number five. You have from our list topics one to fifteen. Choose a number and we read the topic. You are expected to act as you were instructed. Number eight says digestion. You have one minute. Your time starts now. Our candidate number six before us is a list of topics you are to make your choice from 1 to 15 and act as you were instructed 14 14 says the society you have one minute your time starts now
selected 1 to 15. Make your choice of any number. We'll read the topic out to you and you act as you were instructed. So make your choice. Number 7 says transportation. You have one minute. Your time starts now. You are contestant number eight. You have from a list of topics one to 15 to choose. Make your choice and act as you were instructed. Number 11 says argumentative essay. You have one minute. Your time starts now. Candidate number nine. You have a list of topics one to fifteen. You are to choose any one of them. We we'll read it out to you, and you mime your action, depicting it in a typical classroom. Make your choice. Number nine. Number nine says marriage. You have one minute. Your time starts now. Contestant number 10, from a list of 1 to 15 topics, choose a number, we we'll read it to you, you are expected to act to depict meaning in a typical classroom as you were instructed. So make a choice. Number 5 says addition and subtraction. Your time starts now. Candidate number 11, you have from a list of topics 1 to 15. Choose a number and we we'll read the topic, after which you are expected to act to a convenient class of yours to convey meaning of the topic. Make a choice. Number 11, it says argumentative essay. You have one minute, your time starts now.
candidate number 12 from a list of topics here 1 to 15 choose a number and we read the topic you are expected to describe using your actions as you were instructed to a typical class to convey meaning make a choice Number seven. Number seven says transportation. You have just one minute and your time starts now. Time up. Candidate number 13. From a list of topics 1 to 15. Choose a number and we read the topic. You are expected to act as you were instructed. Make a choice. Number 6 says respiration. Respiration. You have one minute and your time starts now. Candidate number 14, you have topics listed 1 to 15. Choose a number, we read the topic to you, you are expected to mime that topic to a class of your own to convey meaning. Make a choice. Number 11 says argumentative essay. You have one minute and your time starts now. Candidate number 15, you have topics listed 1 to 15. Choose a number, we read the topic to you, and you are expected to act to convey meaning to a particular class of your choice. Number 1 says living things. You have one minute, your time starts now.
Welcome. It's a brand new day on the Teachers Reality TV show live. I'm your host, Soyari, and of course, I'm not doing this alone. I have with me the most amazing, talented, super duper, fine boy, no pimples with me, Baba Show. Thank you so much, Soyari. I'm sure that they all love the way we look today. Yeah, I actually feel like one of the housemates with this. All right, our viewers, when we come back, we'll have our 15 housemates right here on the stage. Teachers TV reality show. Welcome back. We are still on the Teachers Reality TV show. Yes, and now we have all the housemates on stage. So quickly, we're going to let the judges address the housemates, telling us the task for today. The topic for today is talking point. You would have from a list of 1 to 15 topical issues in education. When you choose, we want to measure your understanding. We want to measure the steps you will take in addressing them. They are typical classroom situations. We will grade you with the following points. One, understanding of the concepts. And secondly, the steps taken to address the issue. Thank you. Okay, there you have it. The judges have spoken and the contestants are ready. So we're going to give the contestants the opportunity to go prepare for the next act. When we come, it's all about the show to begin. And we wish all our housemates the very best of luck. The Teachers TV Reality Show. Housemates number one. Yes, sir. Pick your question. Question 13. Question number 13. How do you address examination malpractice in your school? Thank you, sir. Uh, engaging in examination malpractice is actually an act of indiscipline. It's a situation in which a student or a candidate brings in a microchip or probably cheats from another person, another student, during the examination. And this is not allowed. As a matter of fact, it is a punishable offense under the law. But we know that communication is key. So we have to actually address this situation publicly during assembly and any general meeting in school. We state the consequences of engaging in examination malpractice to the students. They should be properly communicated to. Then we should also beef up uh, situations around to discourage the issue of examination malpractice. For example, we can ensure that there's proper supervision during examination. We should ensure that teachers teach well and do a lot of revision so that students are encouraged to have confidence in themselves so that during examination, actually, they don't have a reason to engage in any examination malpractice. And any good behavior that wants to be repeated, seen repeated, should be publicly encouraged. Time up. Candidate number two. Yes, sir. The task before you requires that you pick a number one to 15, and a question will be read out to you. Question number five. Question number five. How would you handle a bully in your class? All right, thank you very much. Now, in my class, if I have a bully in my class, first of all, before I start talking about it, one of the characteristics of a teacher is to have a student, a teacher-student relationship. Now, and part of the qualities a good teacher has is good communication skills, creative thinking, creativity, and good disciplinary action. Now, and good classroom management. If I have a bully in my class, first of all, I will make him know that 
that is not the right way to go. I will make him work with the other children. Of course, there will be other children in the class that he can emulate. You have the children with different personalities. You have the ones that are good leaders. You have the ones that can influence others. Now, I will let the, the bully know that it is not good because one good turn deserves another. Now, here is my motto. What you don't like someone to do to you, don't do it to another person. So if that bully is in my class, we all will work as a team. I believe in teamwork. I will train them that they should always look out for one, one another. Then if that bully is there, definitely before the bully will, be, will leave me, he or she must have changed. That, that, thing is, that is one thing I am very, very sure of. But then if it doesn't change, there are other methods, like what we call nipping it in the board. Something must have prompted that, that child to be a bully. I will go to that person, I will try to see, I will observe, and if there's any other thing I can do to make him to change. Of course, there are lots of ways you can make a child change. I'm sure I will be able to do that. Housemate number three, please pick your question. Number seven. Question number seven. How would you handle an absentee teacher? Okay. I uh, will first of all, knowing fully well that um, a teacher had to actually let us know why she or he is absent, I will then call to know why and what happened that the teacher was absent. I will, I will then get the reasons. Of course, when the teacher comes back, I will also have a meeting with the teacher. Since the teacher is also not available, I will make sure that I replace the teacher with another teacher, giving the teacher the lesson plan and the lesson notes, which will guide the, the teacher that is replacing the absentee teacher. Candidate number four, you have topics listed one to 15. You are required to pick a number and the question will be read to you. You are expected to answer in one minute. Question number five. Question number five. How would you handle a bully in your class? All right. Um, handling a bully in my class, I will need to first of all um, investigate the students involved. Try to check his or her um, background. Try to know um, the relationship he's having with the parents. And then call him and then um, try to counsel him. So if I discover that um, why he's doing this in class is as a result of attention that is not given to him or her by parents because parents are very busy then I can now know how to provide a solution if that is the reason but if that is not the reason if it is um, he's just being aggressive then I will also know how to come in in that regard so if it is uh, as a result of not getting attention from the parents I may need to, um, through the school, reach out to the parents. Time up, please. Housemates number five, please pick your question. Number five. Question number five. How would you handle a bully in your class? You have just one minute. Your time starts now. Okay. A bully is someone or a pupil that um, surprises depresses other people with either activity, behavior, or abusive words, using unkind words on other pupils. Now, how will I address a pupil with, that is a bully? Now, the first thing I will do, if I'm teaching and you're bullying someone else, I'll tell you to, first consequence, you stand tall. Then I continue teaching. Then, the, if you're still doing that, I give you the second consequence, which is stand and lose five minutes of your outdoor. Then I continue teaching my lessons. Then if you're still doing that same thing to the same pupil or you're 
you're disturbing my class. The third consequence I will give you is that you lose all your outdoor. You lose all your outdoor. Then if you still need, you are still misbehaving, I'm going to send you to the academy manager. Thank Time you. Up. All right. Number six. Pick a question. Question number six. Question number six. How would you handle an exceptional child in your class? Exceptional child in your class. All right. First of all, I understand that an exceptional child is a child that does not flow with the accountants of others because he or she is limited at his, own, his or her own understanding. Now, in such situation, I cannot you know, allow that child to be measured with other children. Then after classes, I can take up the child and, you know, take care of the child and give the child the necessary attention needed. Having known that, such child can be, you know, reported to the school authority to know that there is such situation. And the parents of the child's attention should also be drawn to know that there is such case in the life of their child. Housemate number seven, please pick your question. Question number seven. Question number seven. How would you handle an absentee teacher? You just have one minute. Your time starts now. If I have an absentee teacher, I usually have a list of phone numbers and all that. So I'll have to call the line of the teacher. If there's a response, I'll have to ask why the teacher was not in school. But if the teacher comes to school, then I'll ask for physical conversation with the teacher to know why the person didn't turn up for school. And if the reason is not genuine, then uh, maybe punishments and all that can come up. Thank you. Housemate number eight. Yes, sir. Pick your question. Number one. Number one. Yes, sir. How can you deal with children with special needs? You have one minute to address us. Okay. Children with special needs could possibly be, maybe they, could not, they can't see very well or they can't hear very well. I pick them and place them in a particular sitting position, possibly where, regarding the kind of need they have. So that the baby, those who cannot see, who are far sighted or short sighted, can see very clearly. I put them in the front so that they will be able to see. Those who cannot hear very well, I bring them closer to the front seat so that they can be able to equally hear. And I, I give them extra, pay more extra attention to them in cases of explaining whatever I have, that has been taught in the class. I give them more attention so that they will be able to understand whatever has been taught in the class. Equally, I can create more time for them, like during break and see to them that their class activity is properly done, just to make sure that knowledge is being passed down to them and it's more easier for them. And they don't feel, I, I pay more attention to them in the sense that they, I make them not to feel, feel different from others. Time out. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Housemate number nine, please pick your question. I'll go for question number nine. Question number nine. How would you work around the unavailability of teaching resources as a teacher? You have just one minute. Teaching resources are necessary materials that, helps, uh, that help the teacher to carry out her teaching in class. As a teacher, when you find yourself in a situation where there is unavailability of teaching resources, you have to improvise. Depending on the kind of topic you want to teach, you, will look, you may look around you. You can use um, the objects in your class as your teaching resources. You can even use your students as your teaching resources. For instance, if I am to teach um, the topic, noun, which is an English topic, and um, I don't have uh, enough resources in the class, I would use my students, every object I found, I find in the classroom automatically becomes a teaching resource. Um, apart from that, 
I would as well make my students to mention the resources they know, the kind of materials they Time think up. will uh, help them Time understand up. the concept. Thank you. Housemate number 10. Yes. Pick the question. Question 10. Question 10. How would you react towards a student who corrects you in class? How would I react if one of my students should correct me? Um, correction is a process of unlearning something that has been learned before or refocusing an idea to something new. And correction is an essential uh, part of, of the classroom. It's part of classroom management. So um, how I react, there are, two, there are two ways. Number one, if a correction is based on, if a correction was made to actually correct a point and to stimulate learning, that's, that's fair and fine. And secondly, if the correction was made out of mischief or sarcasm. So in the first case, if a correction is made for educational purposes, maybe I made a mistake, uh, maybe I'm teaching nouns, and I say swimming is a noun. And the teacher says, sorry, sir, swimming is actually not a noun, it's a verb. I say, oh, yeah, he's true, very correct. And I'll point out to the class that swimming is not a noun, it's actually a verb. And I would also give him accolades and applaud him. And also encourage other class um, members to always not be afraid to point out um, a mistake in the class so that other people don't copy a wrong, uh, go home with the wrong uh, idea of something. Then secondly, if the correction is made out of mischief or the child just trying to be funny or just trying to make fun of the teacher, I'll, I'll, I'll be cool and calm. First thing, you will tell the people to, the, the, the students, Time up, please. or the people to, um, to you tell the people or the student. Time up, please. Oh, time up. Housemates number 11, please pick your question. Question number seven. Question number seven. How would you handle an absentee teacher? How would you handle an absentee teacher? You have just one minute. Your time starts now. Thank you for that question. How I'll be able to handle an absentee teacher is first by finding out the reason for the person not being in school. And if the person was able to send a message across that there is a reason why I won't be in school, then that's a first step to solving the problem. The next is to find out what the person is to do that day in school and see that the activities of that particular teacher is being covered such that the learners would actually not lose out and the activities will be carried out. But where the teacher didn't pass an appropriate information across, then the teacher will be bound to face certain consequences when the person returns, based on his or her reasons Time for off. being absent. Thank you very much. Thank you. Housemate number 12. Yes, sir. Pick your question. OK. Number four. Number four. Yes, sir. How would you handle slow learners in your classroom? Slow learners in your classroom. OK. Hello, viewers. My name is Ijiga Dominic. I'm your amiable housemate number 12. A slow learner is that learner that has a challenge with speed. He tends to be slower than other learners. And I'll handle a slow learner in my class this way. Firstly, I will differentiate a slow learner's activities, giving the slow learner different tasks to do from the first learners, having identified his challenge of being slow. Secondly, I will have another teacher work with a slow learner in a class to keep up with speed. Thirdly, I will differentiate the assignments I give to a slow learner, having recognized 
the ability of that learner, giving that learner tasks that are uh, according to the ability Time of up. the learner. Thank you. Okay. Housemates number 13, please pick your question. Question four. Question number four. Number four. How would you handle slow learners in your classroom? How would you handle slow learners in your classroom? You have one minute, your time starts now. All right. I would handle the slow learners in my class by not giving them the same task with everybody in the class. And then um, I will pay some special attention to them. Number one is that I will start relating with them on their level. I will start giving them tasks according to their own ability because every child is special. Every child is unique and we will all learn at different pace. Number two is that I would always give comments whenever they make attempts and, and they, they try. I will always give comments that will encourage them so that they can do more. Also, I will always make them stars. I will make stars on the board. Like we have a star corner. Anytime I see that they are measuring up, I will always put them at the star of the week so that others too can you know, be seeing that they are improving. Also, I will relate with their parents at home to, to, to also help them to, to... I will give them assignments that, will, that their Time parents up. can engage them also at home. Time up, please. Thank you very much. Housemate number 14. Yes, sir. Pick a number. Number one. Number one. Yes. How can you deal with children with special needs in your class? Okay. Um, children with special needs are children that uh, either have learning difficulties um, by virtue of birth or by virtue of difficulty in comprehending topics fast. And to handle such children, the first step to do is that you first identify the unique problem that the child has. There are some children that have dyslexia. There are others that have um, ADHD, ADHD. And so when you are able to identify these problems, you are now able to focus your teaching that will affect them positively. And if they are slow learners, you would have to go over and over until they have learned the topic or if you find out as a teacher that they cannot cope at the particular class time, you can create an extra time to go over that same topic with the child to ensure that the child is at par with those who are excellent learners so that when you come subsequently, you will be able to move the class along um, without leaving a child behind. And also, if it is something that you as a teacher cannot handle, you get an expert who understands the issue, dyslexia or ADHD, to handle the issue. Or you recommend to the school. Time up. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Housemates number 15, please pick your question. Number 15, sir. Okay, question number 15. Would you prefer to send your own children to a school in Nigeria or Europe? And why would you do that? You have one minute. Your time starts now. Wow, thank you so much, sir, for this privilege. Um, I will, I would rather like to prefer, um, send my children to school in Nigeria. The reason being that Nigerian schools, there are so many schools in Nigeria that are beginning to wake up to the importance of what education is all about. So many good schools right now in Nigeria are trying to um, see how they can help their game. They are trying to see what they can bring on board. They are trying to see how they can actually give the best to their pupils. Right now, um, in teaching, so many good schools in Nigeria are trying to bring technology um, on ground, trying to help the children to um, see how they can use technology to become better learners. So if we have proprietors, proprietors, we have schools right here in Nigeria that are trying to give that. I see no reason why I would want to send my child abroad. We have so many good schools, so many good schools right here in Nigeria that are really, really living up to expectations. Time up, ma'am. So, 
with this, I think I would like my children to be schooled here rather than abroad. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Teachers TV Reality Show. Supported by. For sponsorship and advert on the Teachers Reality TV Show, please call the numbers 0803 489 8510, 0812 120 2104. Hello, great viewers at home. I am Okosu Osalu Mese Victor, aka Tutor and Talent Manager. I am housemate number four and I am up for eviction. Please, I need your vote and support to keep me in the house so that I can win the prize. The process to vote for me is rolling on your screen right now. Please vote for me. Thank you very much. Hello, viewers at home. My name is Adukunle Adeshei Emmanuel, housemate number 13. I am up for possible eviction. Please, I am counting on you to vote for me. Share the numbers on the screen and please go to that I am trusting on it. Share you, you can do it. Hello viewers at home. My name is Atta John Adonuba. Housemate number 7. I am up for eviction at the moment and I will need your vote to keep me in the house. Please follow the link below your screen to do the voting. Thank you so much. Great viewers at home. I am Olawali Oladimeji, contestant number 1. And I am up for eviction. I need your support and help to vote so that I remain in the house. Follow the link on the screen to vote for me. Counting on you. Good evening, friends and viewers out there. My name is Namso Dawson, contestant number 10. I'm on probation and up for possible eviction. Please use the link you see on the screen below to vote for me and to keep me in the house. Peace, one love. Hi, viewers. My name is Dominic and I'm your housemate number 12. I'm up for eviction and I will need your vote please to keep me in the house. Use the process and the link on your screen to vote for me to remain the face of Nigerian and African teacher. Thank you. Hi viewers, my name is Madidi Soma Jane, contestant number two. I am up for eviction. Kindly vote for me using the link on the screen. I am very positive you haven't seen the best of me yet because the show just began because I'm going to be showing you what and who a true teacher is. Please vote for me and keep me in the house. Thank you. To vote for your favorite contestant, please visit www.teachersrealitytvshow.com.ng You can also vote on our Instagram page at teachers underscore reality TV show and Facebook teachers reality TV show. Oh my, that was smoking hot. Smoking hot, that's I've right. always known we had intelligent teachers in Nigeria. That's right, every housemate brought their best food forward. Now to keep your favorite housemates in the house, follow the description and instruction for showing on your screen on information on how to vote. Until we come your way again next time on the same station, same time, I'm Oyari. And I'm Babashi. And we say good night. Oh,